So the lab we're going to do this week is uh, going to be dealing with a couple of Kepler's laws, um, primarily the first and third law. But I wanted to cover all three real quick um, just to kind of talk about them. His um, first law is that every planet <clears throat> moves in elliptical orbit with the sun at one focus. Now, I'm going to talk more about um, what it means to be the focus point on an ellipse. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about an ellipse in just a second. Um, but that's his first law. Understand that Kepler wrote the law based on the planets, but it's anything orbiting the sun has an elliptical orbit. Planets, comets, asteroids, whatever. Um, and I'm going to talk about this shape of the ellipse. You got the sun. This would be about where one focus point is. The other focus point would be right about here. Um, I'm going to talk about the meanings of those in just a second. His second law is that as a planet moves in its orbit, a line drawn from the sun or from one focus point to the planet sweeps out equal areas in equal time intervals. So let's say, for example, that this is June 1st of the year and that this, and that this line represents June 30th. So 30 days, a month has passed. What Kepler is saying is this area of the ellipse, and he figured this out by using pretty good trig because um, he didn't have our tools that we have now. This area, the red area, is going to be the same. And let's say this is, oh, let's say this is December 1st, and give me 30 days later. This is December 30th. The red area and the green area are equivalent. That's his second law. They are equal. And really what that comes down to is that the planet travels at different velocities around the sun, um, thanks in part to the fact that it does travel in an ellipse. His third law um, was an algebraic nightmare that he discovered, but it's, uh, it's, it's pretty accurate, it's pretty true for all practical purposes. And that is, if you take the period of a planet going around the sun, square it, divide by the cube of the semi-major axis, that's a constant. So in other words, t squared over a cubed is equal to constant for all the planets, for all the objects orbiting the same thing. So for all the objects orbiting the sun, this ratio is a constant. And the lab that we're going to do looks at this third law. We're going to do some calculations with this constant. And, and it looks at the first law, the ellipse. Now, let me go into a little bit of detail about what an ellipse is, how to do the calculations with it. Um, here's an ellipse. Kind of nice. What we don't see is, let's put the ellipse on a plot. That might be my x. That might be my y. So obviously right there is my origin point. Um, a couple of things to note that the distance, this distance here, is the semi-major axis, not because it's along the x-axis, but because it's the longest one. But we're going to work with it this way. This distance right here is my semi-minor axis. I give the semi-minor axis the notation B. I give my semi-major axis the notation A. Now, there are two points on this semi-major axis, one right about here, one right about here. These are the, these are the focal points, or the foci. i um, going to call that F1, call that F2. The definition of the, of the foci, their equal distance from the origin, so if this is x, this is also x. But what makes it more special is if I have a point right there on my ellipse, the distance from point P 
F2 plus this distance. So let's call this P1. Let's call that P2. P1 plus P2 is a constant. When that occurs, we're at our, we're at our focus points. So that's what I was talking about in terms of the focus points. The sun might be located right here, and this would be the Earth going around the sun. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is not all ellipses are the same. For example, we can draw an ellipse that is very flattened out and oval. We can draw an ellipse that is much more circular. Both of these are ellipses. Both of these have similar, well, can be, can be modeled by the same ellipse equation. And I'm going to talk about what that is in just a second. Obviously, where they vary is in the value of the semi-major and semi-minor axis. Now, <clears throat> we capture this difference in the ellipse in this term known as the eccentricity. The eccentricity is just a value that represents what I like to simply call the ovalness of the ellipse. It's an equation that looks something like 1 minus b squared over a squared, and you take the square root of that expression. Um, and that is the eccentricity of the ellipse. Let's just look at a couple of examples with this. If, um, if b squared or I'm sorry, if B is equal to 0, then the eccentricity, if B is equal to 0, this term is 0, eccentricity is 1. And essentially, if, if the B was equal to 0, as this value approached 0, what we're going to have is an ellipse approaching a line. On the other end of the eccentricity, if B is equal to A, then the eccentricity is equal to 0. And if B is equal to A, as the value of B approached A, we would approach a circle. So a circle is a special case of an ellipse an ellipse with no eccentricity. Part of the lab that I think I have you doing is to calculate the eccentricity of the Earth. And what you're going to find is that it's very close to zero. The Earth has almost a perfectly circular orbit. A lot of the planets do, which is why Kepler had problems. Uh, he thought they were circular orbits. And because it's so close to being circular, he had problems actually seeing or identifying the fact that uh, circles weren't it and that it was an ellipse. So let's get into the mathematical properties of an ellipse. Um, just like a linear line, the equation is y is equal to mx plus b. And, and you're familiar with m and b. An ellipse has an equation associated with it. It looks a little bit different. x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. a and b are the semi-major and semi-minor axis values. <clears throat> so if, if I want to um, draw an ellipse that has a semi-major length of 10 and a semi-minor value of, say, 5. Um, basically, I'll plug 10 in for A, 5 in for B. 
various values in for x, calculate what my y is, there you have it, you get a beautiful ellipse. However, we're going to do things just a little differently. We're going to graph it out with a graphing package. And we're going to go to the website. So we're going to go to this website, and what we're going to look for is, I'm going to type in Graphmatica. There it is, Graphmatica by KSoft. I'm going to go to the website. And this is a free download, so very, it's, it's really nice graphing package. Um, so download either the, uh, the Windows or the Mac version, whichever one you want. It doesn't really matter. And when you do, you're going to get a package that looks like this. And, and it's really quite easy to use. You just type in the equation for the shape or for the line. For example, um, a linear line. Y is equal to 2x plus 3. And then we see our straight line here. It's just you type it in as you say. So if I want to make an ellipse with um, a semi-major axis of 10 and a semi-minor axis of 5, I go to my ellipse equation, which is x squared over my semi-major axis squared. That's 10 squared. And you can just put it in as 10 squared plus y squared over, and my semi-minor axis length is 5, over 5 squared, that's equal to 1. Zoom out just a tad, and here's my ellipse. The, the package graphs it beautifully, not a problem. Now, here's a slight hmm, problem that we're going to run into. When it plots it, it plots it right at the origin. So right here is my origin, and it plotted it centered on the origin. Um, that can be a problem. Now, when we're plotting the planets, because, because we really don't want it centered on the origin, we want it centered around the sun. And the sun is over here at one of the focus points. Now, when we're plotting the planets, that's not a big deal. The, the distance between the focus points and the, and the center is so small, um, it's not worth trying to work around. So plotting the planets, we don't have to worry about the offset. You just get the semi-major, semi-minor values, plot them, pl plug them into Graphmatica, and plot them. The problem gets bigger when we're dealing with a comet. Now, here's what I'm talking about. Um, with, a, uh, with a planet, the orbit is fairly circular. That's not quite perfectly circular, but that's perfect for what I want to show. And so, Why this might be my origin, the location of the sun, I might as well use yellow to make it sunny. The sun, the focus point, might be right there. So we're not talking about a huge offset. We're not talking about a big um, impact on my, um, my graph. For, for a, a comet, a comet has a much more elliptical orbit. And if we just plotted the ellipse, it would be centered on the graph like that. But in reality, the ellipse would be, in reality, there we go. The ellipse would be offset like this because I want I want to get it close to the sun right right around here, far away from the sun on this edge. And so I have to offset it a little bit. And so to offset it, 
what I want to do, let's get rid of the earth. What I want to do is I need to know a couple pieces of information. I need to know the semi-major axis. Because this is the distance I want to offset. I also need to know this distance right here. I'm just going to mark D. Now this is called the perihelion. That's the closest approach to the sun. And so I can calculate my offset is simply A minus the perihelion. That tells me how much I need to offset the ellipse. Now, so we can do this calculation, and, and, and the perihelion and the semi-major axis information is pretty available. We should be able to find that. Then it gets into how you graph it. This is the, this is the basic expression for calculating an ellipse centered on the origin. If I want to offset it a little bit, I just do a slight modification to this expression. x minus c squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. Here, the c, the value c, is my offset distance. So, let's go back to my previous equation where I had a semi-major axis of 10, a semi-minor axis of 5, and let's say I want to offset it by 3. So I want my offset to be 3. I'm going to plug in the same equation into my Graphmatica, except instead of saying x squared, I'm going to say x minus c quantity squared. Let me show you what it looks like. Going to Graphmatica, and here's my equation for um, the white ellipse. I want to take x minus 3, because that's how much I want to offset it, squared divided by 10 squared, plus, I don't want an offset in my y direction, you don't need to do that, y squared divided by 5 squared is equal to 1. And the red ellipse is my offset, and you can see how much that's offset. And if I change this 3 to a 7, I can offset it even more. So when we're plotting, because part of the graph, part of the lab is I want you to plot the orbits of several of the planets with the comet orbits. And so you're going to have to offset the orbits for the comets so that they line up right. Because right here, I'm assuming at my origin is the sun. Okay. That's the one, two, three on a couple of Kepler's laws, um, especially the, the background on the ellipse. The lab has the NASA website information for you. Um, we're plotting Venus, Earth, Mars, and Jupiter. It tells you what information to get. Um, I suggest you use the Graphmatica inf uh, lab, the Graphmatica application, because it's um, cheap, free. And um, it's a good package, and you can print from it. You might have to practice uh, setting up the printer and the colors so that uh, you can see the, the colors, but um, it's not too bad. Um, talked about how to do the offset. Talked about the eccentricity, because uh, that's one of the things I think I have you calculating. Um, and then I ask you some general questions about the Earth's orbit and um, things to look into. Take a look at this stuff. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Hopefully everything will go well.